This is a critical component used by power companies to communicate with the smart grid, and today we're going to take it apart. Now it's not something available at the corner store, so naturally you must be thinking, how did he get one? Don't ask. Let's look at a brief overview of how this smart meter network functions. Smart meters form a mesh network and send your power readings to other meters that relay them back to the power company. When it gets to this device we are looking at called a collector, the data that was received from the mesh network is sent back via a cellular modem where the power company uses it for totally non-nefarious purposes. This unit is made up of five major components which we'll take a closer look at. A backup battery, a 900 megahertz radio board, an Intel-based single board computer, a cellular modem, and a backplane board responsible for supplying power to everything. You'll notice there's a magnetic read switch as well that is triggered when the device is opened. I am not sure what is triggered when this is opened. Let's hope it erases valuable encryption keys. The battery is massive, 164 watt hours, which will allow it to keep running when a power outage occurs to relay information back to the power company. The 900 megahertz radio board is the same as the board used in the IWR pictured here. This is the radio used to communicate directly with the smart meters. What's under this mounting plate is going to blow your mind though. I didn't believe it when I saw it, but that's a MSATA hard drive, and after I pull all the parts out, I'm going to plug it into my computer and see what's on it. You can see on the single board computer that there are a number of serial ports, the processor and an ethernet port. The processor uses the aluminum chassis as a heatsink. Now I'm removing the power connector on the end and the backplane board which has the cellular modem module still on it in the bottom right. The modem has a couple antenna connectors that need to be removed. I also remove the heat sinks and this heat sink alignment plate. These two pink heat sinks are used for the voltage regulators on the bottom of the board. Popping the RF shield off of the 900 MHz radio board, the first thing I notice is a different design than the Chipcon transceiver used in the smart meters themselves. You can see detailed photos of these boards on the Richesum wiki. The link is in the description. And now the moment you've been waiting for. I had to wait a couple days for this adapter to show up so I could plug the MSATA into my computer and create an image. That was the longest couple days of my life. And I swear, when I plugged it in, this happened. To my complete surprise, it's running Windows. And to make it even easier, the folder storing all the software is called Collector. The software is written in .NET, which from what I hear makes reverse engineering it significantly easier, and symbol names appear to be intact. Also cool is that I can boot up the image inside a virtual machine. You can see the cellular modem driver and the Windows version shown in the command prompt as 6.1.7601, which is Windows 7 SP1, released in February of 2011. Hopefully it's patched. After the VM sits for a while, this software starts up, which appears to be the main application. That's good news, because I've been trying to figure out how to communicate with these IWR radios. I'm going to hook this one to the virtual machine and log all communications to see how this part of the network operates. Thanks for watching. <laughs>